very important and critical people in this room is this panel of commercial real estate owners who will share a little bit about their journey and share why it is possible and why it's possible for you. So we hope that you lead this presentation with some action items on what you can do next to become a commercial real estate owner for your business. So let me start with the why. Why are we hosting this webinar? We're hosting it because we firmly believe it is possible. And as a partner of the U.S. Small Business Administration, we're excited about this. Why? Because that's why the agency was created. In 1953, the U.S. Small Business Administration Act was adopted, establishing the SBA. And that this year, they celebrate their 70th anniversary, or the SBA celebrates 70th anniversary, in fact, on July 30th, 1953. And I want to read to you directly from the act as to why it was established. The Congress finds that ownership and control of productive capital is concentrated in the economy of the United States and certain groups, therefore, own and control little productive capital. In 1953, when this act was established, it recognized that certain groups owned and controlled little productive capital. The act further stated that certain groups in the United States own and control little capital because they have limited opportunities for small business ownership. Number three, that by broadening, by broadening the ownership of small businesses amongst groups that presently own and control little productive capital is essential to provide for the well-being of this nation by promoting their increased participation and the free enterprise system of the United States. So over 70 years ago, when the SBA was established, or almost 70 years ago, when the SBA was established, it was established to promote small business ownership and to promote capital for those groups that owned or controlled little productive capital. In the next slide, That's coming. <laughs> Possibilities. During President Biden's 2023 State of the Union address, he said this, and this was really encouraging as we have been promoting the It Is Possible commercial real estate ownership program. He said, when world leaders ask me to define America, and they do, believe it or not, I say I can define it in one word, and I mean this, possibilities. We don't think anything is beyond our capacity. Everything is possible. And that's what we're talking about today. It is possible. We want your webinar takeaway today to be impossible is nothing. It is possible. And we want you to believe for it. And we're going to provide you some tools to be able to do that and some stories from people who have done it so that we can let you know that it is possible. With that, let me tell you a little bit about AMPAC. AMPAC is a mission-driven lender, and we're dedicated to advancing entrepreneurial dreams by financing and fostering business success from cradle to legacy. We were established in 2005, and we became an SBA certified development company in the 504 loan program that we'll talk about in 2007. And we became a partner of the U.S. Department of Treasury 
as a certified development financial institution or community development financial institution in 2017. Our loan products that we provide include the SBA 504 program that we'll talk more about today that allows a business owner to purchase, refinance, refinance with cash out, or do construction or tenant improvements on commercial real estate. We also are a partner in the SBA Community Advantage Program, providing loans from 50,000 to up to 350,000 to help businesses with needed working capital. And this program seeks to ensure that at least 60% of the businesses that we serve are in economically disadvantaged communities. S AMPAC provides SBA microloans from $5,000 to $50,000 for businesses that are starting or emerging or need smaller working capital for adding new employees or buying equipment. AMPAC has a liquidity replacement or down payment assistance program we'll talk about up to $100,000 tied to helping businesses buy commercial real estate. We uh, partner this program with the California State Guarantee Program as a CDFI, where we provide loans up to $100,000. We also partner with the County of Riverside and provide loans up to $30,000 for businesses that are based in Riverside County. And we provide grants for businesses through San Bernardino. We're a partner in administering a microloan grant for microloan businesses under 50,000 in revenue. AMPAC launched an entrepreneur ecosystem in 2021, where we provide a business resource center that provides business coaching and mentorship, technical assistance, business network services, and support. We have an AMPAC app that's available on both Android and iPhone systems. We have a business training center where we're conducting this webinar. We have small business networking events, and then we do uh, a monthly and weekly newsletter to businesses that are part of our app and then that are within our network. We like to talk about AMPAC business capital as AMPAC cubed or ABC cubed, AMPAC business coaching, AMPAC business capital, and AMPAC business community made possible because of the app. I want to take just a couple of minutes to tell you about this program that's our signature program that helps businesses to buy commercial real estate. And that's the SBA 504 program, which is a public-private partnership, and you'll hear a little bit more about it. The parties include the bank, credit union, or other SBA lender or non-bank lending partner, the SBA CDC, which is the designation that we have, and the borrower, the small business owner seeking to buy that commercial real estate. The typical loan structure includes a first trust deed, a second trust deed, and the borrower's minimum 10% equity. Um, the bank often is at 50% of the loan, and the SBA, through our partnership, is 40% of the project cost. The benefits of the program is a low down payment, as low as 10%. And if you're outside of California, that may be a lot less. But in California, that's still that 10% can be a hard nut to crack, which is why we established the program I'll talk about a little bit more. But low down payment, longer loan, loan term, so our loans are up to 25 years, and it allows the business owner to plan its cost over time. And you will hear from partners in equity why that's so important in this environment where lease rates continue to increase and it creates some instability for businesses. In the example I provide on the screen, that program for a million dollar loan the um, if you're buying a real estate product project, uh, a real estate, a commercial real estate 
uh, building and it's a million dollars, your equity requirement would be 10% as a small business owner. Uh, SBA would be 40% or 400,000 and the bank would be $500,000. If the project is a special purpose or startup business, SBA requires an additional 5%. So the equity would be 150,000 for that um, million dollar project. 350,000 would come from SBA and 500,000 from the bank. slide. I wanted to just take a couple of minutes to tell you about our down payment assistance or a liquidity replacement program. We established this program um, exclusively for AMPAC borrowers who are buying commercial real estate, and it targets Black, Latino, and women uh, business owners we were able to raise capital from an impact investor to assist us in helping these businesses to build wealth and build generational legacy by owning their commercial real estate. We provide a down payment assistance loan up to $100,000 for the business owner who needs down payment assistance. We looked at that as at least um, of the minimum 10% down, we wanted to do at least half of that up to $100,000. With that program, there's no payments for 12 months. It's a fixed interest rate of 5% over a five-year term with a 10-year amortization. And the goal is to help that business owner to stabilize in their new building with no payments and then the first payment begins month 13. We've seen some great success with the program, and we believe this is a critical program to help with the possibilities, which is why we titled it the It Is Possible Commercial Real Estate Program and Commercial Real Estate Down Payment Assistance Program. Now I'm going to turn the program over to um, Michael Coggins. Michael is um, a senior VP with Bank of America. He's uh, done a ton of SBA loans and um, Bank of America has a special program that targets business owners. So I'm going to turn it over to Michael to talk a little bit about his role with Bank of America and some of the programs that they have targeting in particular uh, black owned businesses, but businesses in underserved communities. Mike. All right, hello, can you guys hear me okay? I know I was having some technical difficulties, so I see a thumbs up, Wilson, I'm good to go. <laughs> All right, so uh, thanks for having me, by the way. My name is Mike Coggins, I'm a senior vice president with Bank of America. Uh, handling SBA lending. Um, I've been doing SBA lending for the past 16 years. I live in San Diego. I office out of Newport Beach, but I do loans nationwide. Um, today, I wanted to talk about a great program we're offering uh, clients who are looking to purchase owner-occupied commercial real estate. Um, it's our new down payment program, which provides a grant up to 50% of the required down payment. Um, on an SBA 7A, 504, or express loans for the purpose of owner-occupied commercial real estate um, purchase. Uh, if the property is going to be located within the MSA of one of five uh, cities, which is uh, Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, Charlotte, and Atlanta. Um, if your business is a minority-owned or woman-owned business, and the property is located in one of those um, MSA areas, you can qualify. Um, the grant itself, um, which is not to exceed $25,000, does not uh, have to be repaid. So this is a true uh, grant, no repayment, up to $25,000. Um, to go a step further, at Bank of America, we're offering a promotion, which is waiving the origination fee um, on the first trust deed, um, and the bridge loan, if we're doing a 504 loan, um, or the loan packaging fee on a 7A or express loan. And we're also waiving the appraisal fee. 
Um, and this is for applications submitted uh, before April 14th of 2023. So um, really unique time to take advantage of several offers, including the grant up to 25,000 and the waiver of those origination fees and the appraisal fees. Um, I currently have a, my first approval with this new program, uh, escrow closing here in two weeks. Um, female owned business that is uh, purchasing in Lancaster area. Um, based off the purchase price and down payment, she'll be taking advantage of $17,000 in free grant money um, to help with the down payment, which um, she was super excited about because um, she was actually approved with another lender. Um, and then she, you know, was referred over to me. So it's just literally an additional 17,000 that she's looking at to use for some uh, cosmetic tenant improvements on the new location. So um, great opportunity. Um, we're at a point where we're, I, I was on a call yesterday where there's not a set amount of money. We're literally trying to do this for as many people as possible. So um, it was, oh, I should mention that it was covering opportunity zones in those areas. We've lifted that as of Monday to where it's covering the MSA, which basically added several more zip codes uh, within those cities that we can do these loans for. So basically the process, if the client's looking to purchase in those areas, they just let me know the property address. I search it on the zip code um, tool that we offer. And if it's in the zone and you're female or uh, minority owned, you take advantage, simple as that. Any questions for me on this, you guys? If you have questions, you can put them in the Q&A, um, and then we can make sure that we answer those questions. And what we'll okay. do is at the end, we'll do it, we'll keep checking. And if there's a question, we'll definitely direct that to you, Mike. And if you want Perfect. to respond to a question, you can do that. But we also want to verbally respond so we can get it on the recording as well. Perfect. Perfect. Again, well, that's uh, all I have on the, the program itself, you guys. It's exciting news. Uh, we're really looking forward to helping several uh, business owners uh, with this down payment grant and with the waivers that we're offering uh, get into some commercial real estate so they can start, you know, building some appreciation and, and, and have a long term asset that they can hold on to. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Michael. We're so glad you shared that and so glad to have you. I uh, definitely want to make sure that all of our uh, clients and potential clients in our network get this information as well. So we're going to feature it in our newsletter and on our mobile app because we want people to be able to own their commercial real estate. And I'm sure Wilson and Talib are happy to hear about this as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Wilson and Talib there with Partners in Equity. And um, we're going to play a video. You want us to play that first, right, Wilson? And then once we play the video, then we're going to hear from them. Let me cue that up. I think we're going to cue it up. <laughs> And if it's a, a little sticky, I can jump in and we can just go. Okay, go for it. And then we'll try and get that ready for you. Go on and All do right. this. All right, terrific. Uh, Hilda, we are so appreciative of the opportunity to be with you all today, celebrating Black History Month at this special occasion. I am going to uh, go through this. We're kind of uh, tackling two things at the same time. So Talib is uh, not going to join this portion of the call, but I'm um, happy to to jump in here. Uh, we're live on set in uh, Denver, Colorado, talking to folks today and uh, working our way around the country with the activity that I'm going to speak to you all about. So uh, you can go directly to the next slide. So Partners in Equity, as you just saw, is your opportunity to own. Uh, we are a private equity investment fund focusing on the acquisition of commercial real estate, particularly owner-occupied commercial real estate. And what that really came out of is what we were seeing happening in the marketplace a few years back when uh, communities began to redevelop. We saw Black commercial corridors also evaporating 
because those business owners were tenants and not owners. And we realized that, you know, there was a major um, challenge here, but also an opportunity for our team to aggregate capital that could help prevent this commercial displacement and help proliferate wealth in the black community. Next slide. We can go to the next slide. Okay, so I'll explain a little bit about how our investment approach works. Next slide. All right, so we understand that there's a $16 trillion uh, dollar market on commercial lending across the country. Uh, Mike and his colleagues that are closing a lot of these deals across the uh, country are looking for ways to get more creative and include more buyers, which is essentially why our program exists. Are you ready for the next slide? Yeah, the slide presentation went away, actually. Hmm. Are you all seeing the slide presentation? Right now we see uh, your entire uh, slide deck. And we're back on slide number two. Okay. And if you want me to share my screen, I can pop uh, pop it up there, pretty easy, and I can um, I have it up if you want me to. Okay. Let's let's let him share his screen, Brian. Give us just a moment, and we'll get that up. We'll switch. Not that a out. problem. Not a problem. Thank you all for your patience because you're really gonna, this is really important information for seeing what's happening in the commercial real estate lending market, what opportunities are available and uh, Partners in Equity has a really unique uh, equity product to help businesses get into commercial real estate ownership. So we're just, um, working through this technical issue. And while we're doing that and getting you lined up, Wilson, can you just talk yes, a little- Yes, I can, I can continue to talk about uh, the work and then I'll catch, catch you all up on the slide when we get to it. But uh, one of the things that we targeted through our strategy was uh, SBA 504 which both Mike and Hilda have been talking about today. Uh, one of the reasons that we targeted this SBA product is because we recognize that less than 1% of African-Americans across the country were actually taking advantage of the SBA program, largely due to what we understand as uh, the racial wealth gap and having the capital, friends and family capital to make the down payment work. While SBA 504 is extraordinary and offers that 40% guarantee, and reduces the amount of the down payment for the business owner, it can still be a tremendous amount of capital. This is primarily because black and brown owned businesses are largely service-based businesses. No matter what the service may be, when you are a service-based business, it's cash intensive. So while you may have capital on hand, it's more difficult to pull it out of the operation to create a wealth opportunity for yourself through commercial ownership to acquire that piece of property. So you've been renting for a long time, but you want to be an owner, but you can't be an owner because you need your cash. And the other dynamic that's very true for people that look like uh, like myself and many of you that are on the call is that when you are a successful entrepreneur, you tend to be that individual in your family that is successful. And there's a lot of other externalities that are pulling on the capital resources that you have to invest in yourself and into your business. So we identified this op as an opportunity to really look at how we solve this issue of the racial wealth gap through uh, ownership of commercial assets by business owners. So what we offer is very flexible and patient capital. How we did that was our first fund was solely opportunity zone fund. And we realized that this vehicle of being able to extend an investment out 10 years with no current returns, being very patient capital we could create something that looks a lot like a rich uncle fund that 
many of us in our community don't have that rich uncle that can stroke a check and forget about it for 10 years while you go do your thing and create wealth for yourself. So Mike mentioned the appreciation of the property. So a couple of things happen throughout the horizon of paying on a property is you're, you're paying the mortgage, right? So you're paying that mortgage down and based upon where you live, the valuation of your property could be increasing anywhere from three to 6% over that period of time. Some markets are hotter than others. If you're in a Nashville, or you're in a Charlotte or in California, you know, you're know you gonna see the property value increase more quickly. But we wanted to really show up in a way that uh, was unlike many of the other products that we saw in the market. So there's two things that we offer. We offer both equity and mezzanine debt. We offer this debt so that we can help provide a very low interest rate uh, loan to our business partners, obviously because we're in the relationship with you. We want to try to create an opportunity for you to take care of some things that you may need to along the way if needed, or if there are some things that you need to accomplish before the deal actually gets done and you need access to capital. So right now we're targeted in the Mid-Atlantic, Deep South, Colorado, and uh, Chicagoland area in Southern California. Our uh, structure of a deal, let me see, you I'm not sure if I- your three, Wilson. Perfect, perfect. I want to show you all the structure of what a deal looks like. So can everybody see this slide? Just give me a thumbs up, Mike, I can see. All right, I see thumbs up. All right, so this is the traditional capital stack. So we have a partner like, uh, like Ampac that's able to, work on securing that SBA 504 loan. This example is, is similar to something like that or a traditional lender that's uh, just the bank showing up for you is in that senior position. So this is a $750,000 project, just as an example. This shows an occasion where that senior debt lender is able to put $550,000 on the table. Our company is able to show up with 150,000 and the business owner is able to show up with 50,000. All right, now that's an extraordinary dynamic because in commercial borrowing, the business owner always has to show up with 20% of the deal, right? When you're buying a home, it looks a lot different, but on commercial real estate, this is what it is. It's just what it is. But how do you come up with that $200,000 to make your deal work? Our vehicle is able to come in there and guess what we do? We take a minority percentage in the property. We're not involved in your business. We're not engaged in your business. We're not trying to pull money out of your business. We're just trying to help you buy the property and end up in a minority position of an owner. And you would wonder why that dynamic happens like that 19% ownership. One of the primary reasons why we wanna only own 19% is we don't wanna create any negative challenges for you with your lender. Hilda and Mike will tell you that, you know, that once you own 20% or more in a property, Every person that owns 20% or more in the property has to be involved in the decisioning and also has to be underwritten. But we want to allow the business owner to be empowered to manage their dynamic while we take a back seat while they're scaling this opportunity for themselves and remain majority owner at 81%. All right, so I'm one third of uh, the founding partner team. We have uh, are all executives and uh, folks that have been in the entrepreneur ecosystem working to aggregate dollars and access to capital and opportunity for black and brown communities for quite some time. My uh, co-founder and uh, senior advisor, uh, uh, Napoleon Wallace came to this work as deputy secretary of commerce for the state of North Carolina. And before that was a, 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 a investment officer for Kresge C-suite at self-help very illustrious career. Also, my other partner, Tom Graves Mans, is here with me, but working on a, a, another activity right now, is a, a co-founder and managing partner, created Black Wall Street Homecoming in Durham, North Carolina. Before that was an entrepreneur residence at uh, Google in Durham, North Carolina's uh, American Tobacco Campus, and created two entrepreneurship and innovation centers, one that was backed by an HBCU and a CDFI, and the other, he used his own capital to create uh, embedded in the community. And uh, I came to this work after serving as CEO for a regional CDFI. So we really are interested in advancing the Black community, the Brown community, which is really becoming the new majority. And we feel that commercial real estate uh, for business owners is a way that we can help change the wealth dynamic in a family in one generation.
So we're looking forward to uh, the upcoming partnership with AMPAC in Southern California that will hopefully grow throughout the state of North Carolina. We are currently raising a $100 million fund to do this work throughout the country and are just uh, so excited and thrilled that we would be asked to be a part of today and appreciate you, Hilda, for making the time for us. And uh, if you would allow me, Hilda, I can um, share with the group a short film that we have that talks about what Partners in Equity is. The reason I want to share this is because after this talk, you may say, who was that group or what was that thing? Or you may be trying to explain it to somebody else. But this is a way that you can grab it. I'm going to copy it. And I'm also going to drop that link in the chat for everybody uh, to catch later and share. And I'm going to play it if you um, if you don't mind. So I'll get that in, in the chat. Can I go ahead and do that, Hilda? Yes, you should be able to do that. Okay. All right. Great. I'm going to take my AirPods real quick so everybody can hear. Today, this is a core blood focus treatment. CBR is the number one choice for parents, and it's the most recommended by OB. We're living through a prior crisis, a commercial displacement crisis that has and continues to separate low wealth businesses, especially Black and Brown owners, from their properties at an unprecedented rate. Small businesses in transitioning neighborhoods of Charlotte, Atlanta, DC, and other Southern cities face many of the same gentrifying pressures as residents. Real estate is the primary vehicle for wealth accumulation in the U.S., and the subsector of commercial real estate provides leverage and creates wealth as fast as any domestic asset class in history. To help deals along, friends and family invest over $60 billion annually into commercial real estate transactions, often helping the entrepreneurs they know best meet that essential 20% equity hurdle to get deals over the finish line. However, the racial wealth gap means that significantly less net worth is circulating within the wealth networks of black and brown entrepreneurs, making friends and family capital sparse to non-existent. This leaves entrepreneurs of color largely locked out of the commercial property game, with black owners comprising only 1% of annual CRE lending nationally. Sadly, this is often true even when it comes to buying the properties where they operate. This is why Partners in Equity exists. PI bridges this market failure by giving diverse, modest wealth entrepreneurs an opportunity to own business purpose real estate. PI provides direct equity investment into commercial real estate transactions as down payment assistance to make owner-occupied commercial real estate deals more bankable. And just like friends and family equity, at maturity, PI works with business owners to exit responsibly, making the business owner the sole asset owner with more equity in the property than when they started. This is a financial justice innovation designed to overcome the structural barriers faced by entrepreneurs of color as a result of the racial wealth gap. In the case of Kenya T, after negotiating the deal of a lifetime, she nearly missed the opportunity to purchase a $1 million office park for $400,000, only because she didn't have the equity on hand to make a down payment. With an investment from Pi, her NC-based health and human services company now owns their corporate home. She created generational wealth for herself and her family. And she's now set her sights on developing the entire property to benefit her clients and her community more broadly. If you're an impact-oriented investor that is serious about closing the wealth gap, there's an entire segment of Main Street entrepreneurs that require the trusting handshake of equity to fully actualize their commercial genius through participation in the domestic commercial real estate market. This is essential equity. Build with us. Thank you so much, Wilson. Excellent, excellent. I hope that was insightful for all of you. And I certainly hope that you're thinking uh, bigger and broader about opportunities that are available to you and ways you can use the resources from Mike at Bank of America or Wilson at Pi and uh, AMPAC as a partner to assist you in further developing opportunities for those of you who are on the panel and for those who are listening in. Uh, we hope that this gives you some idea of the possibilities that President Biden talked about and to remind you that it is possible for you as well. So with that, I am so excited about introducing 
um, our star guests today, these business owners who have done it. They bought their commercial real estate. Some of them have bought multiple properties um, to grow their business. And I had the good fortune and the opportunity to talk to these panelists uh, prior to the webinar to hear a little bit more of their story. Some of them we had the privilege to serve with the SBA 504 program. Others we met at events and really enjoyed their story. Cassandra, I'm gonna ask if you could turn your camera on as well as we begin the panel to talk about your journey. How, how, did, how did it happen for you? We have with us today um, Aki Bamboo, High Point Care and Renewing Hope. If you all will take yourself off of mute, and what I'm going to do is ask that you first, and I'll start with you, Marlene, ask that you first introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your business and how you got started, and then following Marlene, I will ask Ruben and Leona to talk, to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your business. And then we'll have Cassandra introduce herself and tell about her business. I am telling you, you are going to really enjoy this. And we're excited that this is being recorded because we want to share it with others um, as well. We're going to have this on our YouTube channel because we think this message from the resources that you heard to these stories is something that others need to know about and others need to be inspired that it is possible. So we are delighted to have you. Marlene, I'll turn it over to you. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in business and what inspired you to start your business. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Marlene uh, Sinclair Beckford, and uh, we, I actually operate a Jamaican restaurant here in Los Angeles. Uh, I started off um, in 2004, and uh, just as an idea of just wanting to offer quality food to our community. And uh, with that, um, I had two children, actually three children at the time, and uh, was working at Kaiser Permanente. And, uh, but all along, I wanted to open a business. That's all I knew. And um, I got that uh, feeling, that desire uh, from a mom that uh, worked hard and struggled long hours and just wanted something better uh, for my family. Uh, we are immigrants from Jamaica. And uh, uh, as I told Hilda uh, uh, earlier, uh, we came from Jamaica in the 1970s and attended school and uh, did all that. And um, just um, had the desire to do something better. And so with that, we set out to open our first Jamaican restaurant uh, in Los Angeles. So uh, we opened a restaurant in uh, um, Mert Park and have struggled and uh, um, uh, worked as hard as we can to own this commercial property. And, um, you know, I'm a little nervous here, so just be a little patient with me. You're doing <laughs> great. Yes, uh, I was a lot comfortable the last time we spoke, so I, <laughs> I don't know, for some reason, it kind of took over me right now. Um, just believing um, in myself that um, I could do this. And I've um, uh, been working with the children and my husband and uh, uh, been struggling uh, to make ends meet. And um, we, uh, as I said, run a Jamaican restaurant and um, just uh, been uh, going along. And um, Hilda, can you jump to someone else and give yeah. me a little time to get my nerves together? I apologize. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great. We just wanted you to tell a little bit about how you got started and you did that. So that's beautiful. Thank you. We're going to ask a follow-up question in a moment. Okay. Let's hear right. from uh, Ruben and um, they'll tell us a little bit about their business and how they got started. So 
Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ruben Stewart and Leona Stewart. Um, it's my wife. Um, well, we uh, our business is we're High Point Care, um, and we serve um, clients that are suffer with mental health disabilities and also intellectual disabilities. Um, we kind of got started. Uh, by, it, it was in the year of 2016. Um, we got married young, and we kind of uh, kind of fell into buying our first condo in 2009. That's when the economy fell. We were able to get a home for 133,000 here in Southern California. So at the time, we didn't we didn't know, you know, we didn't know what was happening. We were young, you know, we were only 24, 25, um, and then we ended up selling that, and uh, we were able to purchase a home. Um, so our goal, we always wanted to open up a group home. That was kind of like what we wanted to do. We always have been, you know, into the, the nature of giving back and helping people. Um, it's just a part of us is who we are. Um, so we want to open a group home, but we had met a family in um, Los Angeles area that kind of got, got us started into a typical group home. They got us into mental health. Um, and at the time, it wasn't really a big crisis here in Southern California. It wasn't a well-known crisis. Um, so when we got in, we started our first group home. Um, and we had four clients in one home. And I mean, it went well. It, it went to, you know, one home to the next home. And it became uh, to what today we provide 24-hour residential care. Um, we have four facilities. We provide transportation um, to 120-plus clients per day. We provide day programming, vocational services to about a, over 100 clients a day. And, and our biggest one of our... The services that I'm extremely proud of is our employment services, um, and all of these services we offer, you know, to, to clients who are mental, mentally disabled and uh, suffer with intellectual disability. Wow, wonderful, wonderful! I will have some follow up, so let me go to Cassandra, and uh, Cassandra, tell us a little bit about your story, how you got started in business. So I'm Cassandra. I actually never dreamed of being a business owner. Um, I actually was a long-term county employee and just kind of got tired of the county politics and started um, private practice back in 2015, a few hours a week, um, because I wanted to uh, give back and do mental health. And so I did mental health a few hours a week and just kind of had the poor, unfortunate effects of getting hurt and um, went into um, starting a private practice full time and was renting and never even knew anything about business owning and being, you know, a owner of a building or any of that. And my very first um, building that I was renting ended up being red tagged and uh, almost three years into it. And so I was like, okay, well, I got to look for a new place. And um, my real estate agent said, hey, why don't you look into buying? And so I started with my first building. And now as of today, um, I have five locations and I own all five of my buildings and I run outpatient mental health. So we have just surpassed about 100 employees um, at all five of our locations. And it's been it's been a journey, but it's been fun and it's been an adventure. And I never, you know, I've been I grew up, um, you know, a single mom and I grew up in Riverside. I actually started my very first building here in Riverside. Um, and so it's been a really fun adventure to kind of see, you know, how to grow. And we see mainly. Um, Medi-Cal population out here, which has been it really exciting for me because this is what I grew up in and this is what I, you know, give back to. And I really enjoy it because that's normally not the population that, you know, mental health um, gives back to in the private practice sector. And so we do. And now with five buildings, we're able to do that. Wonderful. And Cassandra, you said something interesting. So you said, um, you grew up um, with a single mom. Is that what I heard you say? Or you? Grew mm -hmm. I grew up with a single mom, and I was a single mom. And you were a single mom. So, are you the first in your family to own a business, or 
what inspired you? You talked about coming from the county and tired of the politics, but are you the first in your family to own a business or start a business? I was actually the first to graduate from college. Um, and then I was actually the first um, to also own a business. Um, so I was the very first to graduate from college. And um, so growing up in the atmosphere I grew, grew up in was kind of told that, you know, it wouldn't happen. Um, and so I succeeded. And then, of course, went to the county because that's where everyone tells you to go with the the benefits and the pay and everything. And um, so, yeah, that's exactly what I did. And then um, went to owning a business. Um, and I was the first. And of course, it's a very big learning curve to learn how to own a business. Um, and we're not taught that in college. Right. And so, you know, mm -hmm. going piece by piece. And of course, you know, I've met, I've seen you held at so many different business functions now over the years because I tried to learn so much because you don't learn that. You know, it's a it's a learning process almost every day still. And, you know, even owning five buildings is still a learning process. Absolutely. Wonderful. I want to ask the same question to you, Ruben and Leona, and I want to acknowledge Janine Peltier from the AMPAC team. She's our uh, one of our business development officers who worked with Ruben and Leona and just was a champion for you all um, <laughs> and making sure this could happen. But what about you all, your background, your family background? Do you come from a family of entrepreneurs? Is, was it in your genes, in your blood, and you're just carrying on legacy? Actually, no. Um, oh, a, little oh, bit about okay. me, a little bit about me. Um, I'm glad that I fell into um, taking care of people because my mom was sick my whole life, and um, she had MS. And when my husband and I, you know, decided to do group homes and take care of developmentally disabled, I love taking care of people. That's all I've done our whole lives. And so I grew up in Compton. Um, my mom was sick. My dad worked three jobs to get us through school. So it wasn't, um, it was just hard work. That's all we know of. No one owned a business. No one did entrepreneur. It was my dad was a mailman. So like she said, county go a government job, get that stay in that, work hard, put some money away and then retire. And my dad is still working and he's 40, he's, he's been there 44 years. So he's 68. So that's what, you know, I've, I, we've known. So when me and Ruben got married and we both always, he's always had the entrepreneur in his mind. And I just went along with it and God just blessed. Right before we became um, doing the group homes, he was a janitor. That's all he's known his whole life was janitor right before. So it was just hard work, grinding, um, putting stuff in perspective, saving, and going for what people say is impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Same thing, I don't, I, don't, I don't have any entrepreneurship in my, in my background. Uh, like Leona said, I, I, five years ago, I was just a janitor for uh, Santiago Canyon Community College. And we sprung to, you know, without, any experience just jumped in there to uh for five, about five, five five locations uh 70 plus employees so to where we are today is just i mean it's amazing to you know for me to even i, I would have never thought it i wasn't expecting it um it just kind of happened this way so I, I don't come from any entrepreneur but i love to read and i love to study um and i'm, I'm a great listener you know and i like janine I, I can't even i know this you know, Janine, she Stop helped it. us. Just, She's the best. You know, uh, but just listening to people like Janine and the, what Ampac, what you guys have helped me to see, you know, just in the, you know, I think we started in May with the with the, the process, last May. And I mean, I can fully see my business in every aspect financially. I understand what's coming in, what's coming out. So through the process of ups and downs and learning and, and I, you know, actually that that step of buying that condo in 2009 is kind of what started it. We were able to sell it and we got a nice capital seed. We still didn't understand it. It was early on at that time, but, you know, God just kind of blessed us to go from one property to the next to the next. And it all stemmed from, you know, being able to uh, purchase that condo in, in 2009. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Marlene, you came here from... Um, 
Jamaica. I think you told me your mom left nine children and said, I'm going to build a life in the U.S. And yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yeah. Tell, tell me, is that a, did you come from a generation of entrepreneurs or? No, I came from a generation of hardworking, working parents. And my mom was the breadwinner. My dad worked, but my mom was the one that took the mantle and ran with it. And uh, she decided at some point that she was going to America. And one day I'm going to be on that plane going to America. And uh, through an ad in the paper, uh, she filled out an application and was accepted. And that's how I'm here sitting in this chair today. Um, she walked away um, to make life in America and left nine children in Jamaica. And she never forgot us. She was always there, always communicating with us, always sending luggage, always sending um, money for um, food, always taking care of us, always making that sacrifice. And she worked three jobs. I remembered her, um, she would leave at the crock of dawn to go off to her job. She worked as a um, housekeeper when she came here because that was the job she came here for. And um, from there, she got a job at uh, Cedar Sinai. She worked as a um, in the environmental service. And she would get up and she would go to one job and then she would leave and she would go to her job at Cedars and she would get home at around one or two in the morning because she caught the bus. She caught the bus everywhere. And so um, we went off to school. You know, I remember as children, she would get us on the bus in Jamaica and ask the conductor to give us a ride to school. And so when she was gone, they were still asking for her, but she went away to make life better for all of us. And when I came to this country, I went to school and I worked hard. And I had in my mind that I wanted to own my business. I don't know where it came from, but I wanted to own my business. And that's all I talked about. And while I worked at Kaiser, I had a menu, as I told you, Hilda. I made up a menu and I said, I'm gonna open a restaurant. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open a restaurant. So I worked for Kaiser for almost 17 years. And then I got a little you know, tired. You feel it in your bone when it's time to move on, when it's time to do something else, to make the transition. And I told my husband, I wanna open a restaurant. And so we took out a loan on the house and I hear one of your client mention, uh, 133, we paid 120,000 for our first home. <laughs> and we raised three children there. And we started our little storefront restaurant and it just could hold three chairs. And I mean, six chairs and three tables and just a little storefront. And we started off there and struggled. And for the first year, it was very difficult. And we decided we were gonna close the business. But then a customer thought we had a product. And I remember even the landlord telling us, you guys, I am not worried about you because you have a product and you're gonna be fine. I never forgot that. Mm -hmm. And we went to Lamert Park and we opened, I inquired about this property that this customer referred to us about. And uh, they came in, the um, landlord, offered to come by and buy some food and they did. And as I told you, Hilda, they called back within an hour and said, Marlene, the property is yours. You have the space. We have been at that space for almost 20 years now. And God always intercede in our lives, whether we believe it or not, always intercede. Someone, one of my other customer came one day and I was telling him all the problems I was having there. And he said, I'm gonna introduce you to my realtor. And so he introduced me to his realtor. I have to mention her name, Leslie Gear. And Leslie Gear took us to Mr. Critch. And Mr. Critch is the, um, another realtor. Mr. Critch sat us down and prepared us of the importance of owning your own business and he lectured us on what we needed to do and how we needed to prepare. These are people that God provided us with and we listen mm. and we plan 
and we saved and we did all that we needed to do to make the transition. And when the day came, it wasn't easy. It was never easy. It's still not easy. Mm -hmm. But I am grateful for the opportunity. And I say it to you, Ilda, the last time, and I say it to you again, I thank you for the program. I didn't know this would be possible, but here we are today with our new building, our building. I have two daughters and a son, and my daughters have been in the restaurant with us since day one. They're now in their 20s, 28 and 30s, and went off to college, got their degree. One is in marketing, one went into theater, but she's there and she's in the kitchen working like my mom who worked as a chef back in Jamaica. And they're doing all the things that my mom used to do. And sometimes you don't know that your life is in accordance with God's plan. I never knew that they were gonna take up the mantle and start to cook, Melissa cook and bake. Mm -hmm. And Lauren, she you know, went about her business and did whatever and now, if I need to go to the store, Lauren runs the kitchen. Melissa runs the front. Melissa takes care of the catering. Melissa do all the advertisement. Melissa print up the the res the um. I see the program for the restaurants. Yeah, the opportunity, yeah. the possibility. Yeah, that's yeah. what we have yeah. been given, and so that's why I'm sitting here today because of the opportunity that's been provided to me by the initiation of my mom to make the sacrifice to come to this country. And when I look at that, and when I think back, I can't sit and I can't tarry anywhere. I have to keep moving and I have to keep teaching them that the opportunity is there and that you have to take advantage of the opportunity and God always provide you with the people to help you to make those opportunity becomes a possibility. And I'm grateful love, for it. I love that because um, Ampac is a faith-based company. And um, one of our theme scriptures is in Matthew, with God, all things are possible. And that's really what you're, you're all saying. Um, Cassandra somehow got um, disconnected and hopefully she'll be back on shortly. But what I love about all of your stories is you all had a partner guiding you through the process. Several of you mentioned real estate brokers who consulted with you. Janine Peltier has a real estate background, which really helped um, the stewards on your journey. And that's what Cassandra said. And Marlene, you said the same thing. Marlene, you all were in a location in Lamert Park and are for a number of years, and you bought in another city. You bought your property in Long Beach. Tell us a little bit about why now to buy. What, what was it? What prepared you to buy? And I'm going to be asking Ruben the same, Ruben and Leona, the same question. Why, why buy? What, what, made the timing. And I loved hearing you say you prepared, you saved, you put it all together. Talk a little bit about that in your journey. And let me just say one of our team members, um, he's our chief operating officer, Myron Pyramid. He lives in that Lamert Park area and he is a huge fan. He is always at Aki to uh, get his Jamaican cuisine with his family. So he was so excited about us serving you. So please talk a little bit about why now, what, what prompted it, and why didn't you buy your Lamert Park location? What happened there? Um, I have all, you know, as I mentioned before, I've always talked about um, owning our own property, but I think when the um, we have a new person who runs the building now. And initially I had um, a lady by the name of Brenda Shockley who welcomed me in at the initial stage when we went to Lamert Park and then there were Ruby and then there were Kim. And those people were always there 
to help us along, to guide us, to, um, to be a support system. And when this other person came along, it became difficult. We actually had two space in the Lamert Park area. We had a um, cafe that we called Adassa's Cafe that I named after my mom, who is no longer here. And we ran that for about 10 years. But when this gentleman came along, uh, he decided he wanted to take our space. We did not have a lease and our lease had expired and ha we had not gotten it renewed. And so um, what I noticed is that when he came in, uh, he was able to make decision at will. And there was no way for me to counter it because I had no lease. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we had to make a decision. And because we did not want to lose the other space because he was threatening that he could also take the other space and we didn't want to be left out in the cold, uh, we decided that now was the time. Even though we had talked about it initially for some time, we were so comfortable in our skin, in our space, yeah. that we didn't think that we needed to move forward. It was in, our, in the back of our mind. This is something that we wanted to do in the future, but he prompted us to move faster. And so we looked in the Inglewood area and started something there, but just didn't work out. And... Uh, for some reason, we ended up in Long Beach, and that's the best option we could have ever chosen because we have been so embraced by that community. They mm -hmm. have been so happy and so supportive and so loving with their flyers and their uh, just information, you know, that they've put out on us. And um, it just tells us that that is the place for us. And uh, we love the area. We love the people, we love the community, we love the location, and just been really happy um, with the way things went for us. Excellent, excellent. I, I want you all not to miss, they didn't even, they didn't have an agreement. They didn't have any say so. So as a result, if you don't have an agreement, you don't have say so. And that so someone else can control your destiny for your business. And that's an important reason to consider ownership. Those are very important. Pay attention to that. For those who may be listening and you're thinking about it, it's really important for you to focus in on those kinds of reasons. Uh, Cassandra said her building was red tagged. And that could impact her business if she didn't get another location. Ownership does matter in your business stability. Ruben, Leona. Well, for us, um, at the at uh, where we were at currently, uh, uh, maybe it was right, maybe twenty twenty, the beginning of twenty twenty two. It was a big opportunity. Um, for the state of California and the mental health and uh, space to for for providers to start creating something that's unique, um, and one of those opportunities was was day service and vocational training. Um, and the big void was helping some of these uh, these uh, clients, be, you know, get acclimated back into the community and you know uh, learn these skills so they can take them to get a job. So we we kind of saw that opportunity early, um, and. Uh, you know, uh, the, the hard part is preparing a that kind of population for employment. Um, so we, we, we to, to be able to achieve that, we needed a much larger space where uh, we could do more modernized, specialized training. Um, so our goal was to, 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 we had it in mind, we wanted to build like a state-of-the-art facility uh, for people who struggle with mental health issues and uh, intellectual disabilities where they can learn at their own pace. They can choose whatever kind of training or activity that they wanted to use to be able to achieve that goal. Um, so, you know, we kind of thought of, um, we, we, uh, we needed a building for that to make it bigger. So that's when we kind of, we, we, we ran into impact, uh, impact, I'm sorry, impact. And, um, uh, that's when our, our dream just kind of really got bigger through the process. Um, we kind of, uh, figured out what those trainings would be. And uh, upon closing on the building, we've been able to put like a full recording studio, the fully integrated music instrument, uh, recording studio, podcasting rooms, 
uh, a full theater for acting, improv, drama classes, cooking classes, business development, financial literacy, and, and an array of different other classes. Um, so to be able to provide those trainings, this building for us was, uh, it was very, very important. And one of the bigger things that allowed us really as a, you know, a minority, uh, minority owned business to jump ahead uh, of a lot of people who who weren't really taking advantage of this opportunity. Uh, so, you know, for us, uh, a building was just a necessity for us. And, you know, in, in, a, in a sense, we kind of control the area when there's any kind of mental health or anything, anybody that needs a vocational program because we were first to do it here in our area, um, it, it, they, they call us first. Uh, so, you know, for us to, to be able to get this building is just, I mean, it, it, it serves a purpose. We can't even, we had to grow into the building. I think we were only serving about 65 yeah. clients when uh, we met Janine. And uh, our goal was just 150 in this building. We're already over 120 in four months. And our goal was 150 by the end of this year. So without that building, this this opportunity wouldn't be possible. And just to kind of, we, you know, we don't, we didn't, we don't, we didn't know, you know, there's no, nobody was telling us what to do. Um, it, it, we didn't think we could afford a building. Uh, we didn't see it in our finances, uh, you know, and so it, it we really, you know, we just really jumped in and just kind of did it. And, uh, you know, Janine really, really opened us up to see how can we not only afford it, but also be able to, 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 to put the things that we need to put inside of there. So, it, you know, the building was just a necessity and this allowed us really to, to springboard ahead. Yeah, awesome. You know, one of the slides that we had up, it says, together, nothing is impossible. And all of you have talked about people within your circle, within your tribe, who helped you, who believed in you, who pushed you to see your possibilities. And what your stories are doing, uh, what we expect your stories to do is do that for someone else, for them to be able to see their possibilities in your story and be able to duplicate that to make a significant difference in uh, their communities through the jobs that they're creating, through the give back that they'll do in those communities and to the difference they will make as a result of being able to stabilize through the ownership of commercial real estate and what that means. I know you had challenges along the way. Even in your quest to purchase commercial real estate, and we know a little bit about both of your stories in particular, <laughs> um, some things that we we know we we did on our end because we we saw your potential and everyone needs an advocate. Um, no one is an island. And people who say I just pull myself up by their boots by my own bootstrap, that's just really not true because you need somebody to make the boots and somebody to make the straps for you to pull yourself up. I want you to talk a little bit about your challenge. What, what was challenging in the process? How did you overcome it? And a little bit about how you prepared. And you all, all of you talk, I heard you mention some of the things that you did to prepare. You all had bought a home and then you were able to buy another home and have some equity. Um, I heard you talk about savings. It just doesn't just poof, it's there. You gotta do some things to prepare too. So talk about first your preparation and then talk about even with those prepar that preparation, what were your challenges? And why didn't you give up? I'm gonna start with the stewards. For me, <laughs> giving up this is not an, an option. option. It's not an option. Yeah. And I, you know, through each real estate pro uh, purchase, you know, I know, you know, Mike, he's in the, he's in the, the, the real estate space and, he, you know, you could, you go from one property to the next. It's very challenging. Where do you get the money from? I mean, you go from 3% to 5%. Now you got, there's no, after two properties, there's no more 5%. Now you're 20% every, so you give this big, and where's Southern California? 500,000, that's $100,000 down. I mean, now you don't have any money. How do you keep going? 
uh, you know, so the, the, the challenge is, is, is really learning how to, for us was learning how to use the equity that we had learning, you know, for us, uh, there has to be some kind of cash infusion, you know, real estate just can't be real estate. Once the, the 20% is gone, how do you rebound? You know, so that's where business comes into place. And, you know, you're constantly having that cash flow, understanding what your cash flow really, really looks like. Um, for me, I'm a, uh, this is why, you know, I'm, I'm glad I'm married to Leona because I'm a, I, I, my, my dreams are just crazy. They are, um, you know, I just dream wow, but she brings me back to reality. So uh, one of the biggest challenges for us too is the is, role is, of a woman. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's you have to be able to to operate in where you are to, to, to kind of get to the next level. Um, and just understanding finance. It's just you know I'm not I have to be a hundred percent honest. I'm not the smartest person. I didn't go to college, um, you know, so I'm not that book smart. My wife's very smart. Um, so you know the challenge of learning how to read documents, the challenge of learning how to talk to people. Um, just seeing Mr. Wilson Lester and Mike, like I don't you know in, in this journey that I've been on, I don't see people like us. I don't see minorities in the spaces that I'm in when we talk about lending. And, you know, so if I walk in U.S. Bank, which we do a lot of our business through U.S. Bank, I'm nervous. You know, I don't know what to say. And, you know, but like when I'm working with Janine, I was able to just kind of break that down. And it's like I felt like I was talking to, you know, my sister. So, you know, I didn't feel challenged. I didn't I didn't feel like I had to to not be somebody I wasn't. So, you know, mm -hmm. a, a lot of those challenges, um, you know, we face. Um, through this journey and the fear of, you know, how do how do you know you're making the right decision? You know, there's nobody that's saying, hey, you know, you're making the right decision or this is going to put you in a financial bind. It, you know, so some things you just have to make those decisions and that fear, you know, if you live by fear, it just, you know, it just it just messes you up. So those challenges of of learning those things, it's been very, very hard and it's still extremely challenging. I mean, it's not anything easy you know we you go from managing zero employees to 70 what does human resources look like uh you know you get bad employees in here who you know they want to take you to the labor union and lie on you and try to sue you so there's all these things that you have to become really really fast um and those things can be extremely challenging so i don't know if you want to add anything leona my whole thing is um everything that ruben said also you have to put your faith in something. And for me, our faith is in God. And he has really, it's not just us reading and studying and um, saving. It's really God's favor. And like he said, and just believing what he says, that in all our ways acknowledge him, he shall direct our path. And if you believe it and you do the work and you put your whole heart into it, he will lead and guide you. And he led us to impact. And we we're so grateful for it. And we're thankful that you guys are faith-based because you believe what we believe. And just don't give up. Because Jenny always tell us, don't give up. It's going to be okay. Don't give up. And knowing that God has something bigger for you, regardless of what the past looks like, regardless of whatever um, bad things happen in your life, it's just there to propel you and to help and bless others. And that's what we're here for, to help and bless others and to bring others up with us. Excellent. Excellent. I remember your 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 loan officer and our team member, Janine, we were uh, we were we bought our building and we were going through the renovation process and we were in the parking lot and I was just so frustrated about the construction and it just oh my gosh, it just seemed like another month is going to be added and they were supposed to be done. And she looked at me, she said, just think this time next year, you won't even be thinking about this. <laughs> right now, and you know what? This time, that time next year, I was not thinking about that because it was done. It was just what I needed at the right time. So your partners, whether they're members of your team or outside people, they matter. They really matter. And having those right people around you really matters. Marlene. Can I, can I add one quick thing? Sure. Um, uh, one thing that was extremely important that uh, Janine helped us understand is how important your finances look, how, how, how and what shape they're in so that when you go to seek these loans and you go to buy this and buy that, 
it's not a problem. The, the, the underwriters, the banks, they can clearly understand how your, op how your business brings in revenue. Uh, they can clearly, uh, through the projections, that was one of the most amazing experiences that I had with MPAC is being able to, to, to see, okay, this is where we expect to be year 2025. And not only do you just dream it, but now I can visually and prepare myself, you know, okay, we need this many clients, you know, we need this many beds, we need this, this, and to be able to, to have a clear view of, of where you need to go is like one of the most amazing like feelings and it takes a lot of that 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 stress away so i wanted to that was one thing i didn't talk about was that financial side like it's it's the number one important aspect to me and my wife now is uh those finances and we're i mean we're set up our quickbooks is just i mean we can see our business you know penny to penny every month and uh so that was one thing that i didn't mention so that's music to our ears. That's, we want you to know your numbers and know the pennies because pennies make dollars. We love it. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And those projections, that's what we come alongside businesses to do. Help you to do those projections, but you got to know them. It's no one else's responsibility, but yours as the owner. That's very encouraging. Thank you, Ruben. Marlene. Struggles, challenges. Oh, <laughs> you know, when we started the business and I was leaving Kaiser, it was one of the most difficult things for me to do, but I knew that I needed to get it done. And one of the scripture that came to mind was let not your heart be troubled. And I held on to that. And as scared as I was, I knew that I had to do something. And so, um, I made a pack with my husband when we started the business. I said, I'll run the kitchen and you run the finances. And it's been, you know, that to this day. So finances um, is one of the most difficult thing, but I am so glad to have him in my corner, you know, for him to do all those necess necessities. Um, just keeping the business afloat is one of the difficult things. Having to run back in and, you know, do everything, run the kitchen, you know, supervise the staff, um, make all the decision. Those are difficult things. But I am so grateful that I have been able to overcome them and to learn from, you know, all the difficulties that I've encountered. In terms of the, 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 the loan, there were difficult areas. But we were steadfast. And I am so glad to have my daughters there to help us along, um, along with Mr. Critch and Tanya. They were always there to assist us in every way possible. So um, it's just knowing that you have something to do and it's important and you have to take it into your arms and do the best you can. And that's what we did. We worked hard, we persevered, we didn't look at all the difficulties of it, but that we needed to get this done. And I think when you stop focusing on the issue and focusing on what's real, that's when you achieve something. And that's what we did. We focus on what we wanted. We wanted that building. We wanted to show to our children that we could achieve this and that you're gonna have difficult times, that there's gonna be ups and downs and you have to work through them. And that's what we did. We worked through the problems and, you know, we just disregard all the others because those things are going to come anyway. Mm -hmm. Just work through them and focus on what's important. And that's what we did to get to this point. And I'm just grateful that we're here and that I'm sitting here with you and I can talk about it, that this is something that we have achieved, that it is possible to get to this point. If you work hard enough, if you save, if you listen to all the talking heads telling you what's needed, um, both of you, I'm list, you know, hearing you guys talk about what you have done for all of us, um, and just letting everyone know that this is a possibility, and I am just grateful for it. Wonderful, thank you, thank you all so so much. We really appreciate it. Honored to work with you. We're partners with you for a long time, so you're not getting rid of us. <laughs> we're we're going to be close to you for years to come. 
And we certainly hope and expect that your story will inspire others. We have a couple of minutes for questions, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Brian to tell you a little bit about our um, Ampac Business Capital mobile app. We are going to have this video on our YouTube channel and we'll have it on so, some social media platforms because what you do and your story does matter to others who don't believe it's possible. And everybody needs somebody to remind them that it is. Exactly. And so we appreciate the opportunity for you to be able to do that. Are there questions? If you do have any questions, if you would pop them in the chat or in the Q&A, I don't think I see any at this point. Um, I saw a lot of comments like, this is so good. This is awesome. So inspiring. I saw a lot of those kind of comments uh, and really appreciate those comments. Or panelists, do you have hey, any Hey, Hilda, questions? can I? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. I, I'm not going to pop in there since I can get on here and talk. But yeah. um, to Marlene and to Ruben, I think a Cassandra dropped. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we kind of talked about you guys getting into your original property. Um, I know that's a huge, huge deal. I know there was probably nights of uh, losing sleep, thinking about it with the anxiety and whatnot. Um, I guess the question that I have, because I see this come up with a lot of, of, of business owners, is the not knowing. I, I think a lot of businesses don't even realize that things happen like if they're replacing their rent, right, literally moving their operations to the new location when they purchase it. We're going to add that rent expense back to those prior years because you're no longer going to have it. So I, I guess where I'm, I'm leading at is, were you surprised when you got qualified for the purchase? Did you even think that that was something that could be attained? Because um, a lot of the clients I talk to just, they go forever in a lease because they're just like, I didn't know I could buy a million dollar building. It just it didn't even, I didn't even realize that. And sometimes their payment's even lower than their current lease payment when we get them qualified. So that, that's my question to you. We're Very excellent question, Mike. We have the same experience. Great. Yeah, uh, we're definitely. Yes. I mean, we didn't think we can afford a building over a million dollars. We didn't think that so far. We were 100% surprised. And, but through the process, I mean, like the things that what you just mentioned about the rent being put back, I mean, Janine made those things 100% clear and the light bulb just start clicking on and clicking on. So as far as our belief of it, I mean, we didn't. Janine had us holding on to hope. Because personally, there are many we nights me and Leona, we just thought it was over, you know. Um, so I, I didn't understand all. I think that's a big part of it is that lack of of knowledge. You know, that's definitely not in in, in our community. Um, you know, uh, so the, the lack of knowledge is definitely a, a big part. You know. Yeah. Excellent. I think for me, uh huh. Yeah. I oh, think no, for me. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, um, I, I said, I think for me, I, I just receive it. I actually put it out there uh, that I wanted this property. And um, I just kind of believe that um, it was going to work out. I was very surprised when I heard um, that we were qualified. And um, I took it on myself to text every family member to let them know that we were approved. And um, I, I did that. I text every family member to let them know that we were approved. And they were so happy for us. And uh, we just ran with it. You know, we ran with it and just made sure that everything was in place. And, um, and that's what we did, you know? So yeah, it was scary, but um, it was possible. And um, it, it, it came through. Did, did any of you, one of the questions that came up and then I'll have Brian talk is, uh, we're gonna wrap in just a moment. Did any of you leverage your personal res residence to buy your commercial property? Did you pull equity out of your personal residence to do that? No, I didn't. No. Yeah. 
Wonderful. Thank you. That's the wonderful thing that we love about the 504 program is that you don't have to pledge a personal residence, that we can utilize the real estate that you're buying as your collateral and you don't have to add that additional collateral and the down payment assistance, saving money and then getting assistance or, you know, we talked about the creative use of equity from the rich uncle called Pi to be able to assist you in doing that. You just have a lot of options before you. As we plan to come to a close and share this information, I just want to ask Brian to share a little bit about our mobile app and give some closing comments. Thank you so much. And thank each and every one of you for this phenomenal experience. I mean, there's nothing that gives hope and, and, and a light right, toward what the future can be than seeing it for themselves. And so thank you all for your time. This has been phenomenal. I'll briefly do a, a quick screen share and show you all um, what our entrepreneur ecosystem looks like. Um, it is a mobile app. You can download it on the app store at ampac.com. And this way you'll see, um, you'll see Ampac Business Capital's logo. You'll see the entrepreneur ecosystem logo. And you'll see that on this app, we do make it very easy to connect with free consulting with the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, free coaching with the Women's Business Center and free mentoring with SCORE. We also have our co-working space, events, and we keep you connected to information through a news feed that we publish on every week. You're joining a community of more than 600 entrepreneurs and partners of AMPAC, and you are also joining groups. Um, teams are available and accessible, like our Chambers of Commerce. And so we welcome you to not only join the ecosystem, but become a champion of the entrepreneur ecosystem. Too many people don't have access to the capital, not only, but the coaching of the community that you need to really grow. And so we would love for you to continue to support us in advancing the mission of uplifting communities, strengthening families, and advancing entrepreneurial dreams through financing and fostering business success from cradle to legacy. And with that, we will conclude our 2023 It Is Possible Black History Month webinar. Thank you all so much for your time. And we're looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. We'll turn off the recording and then if you want to chat a little.